Oh boy, I can't wait to speedrun my favorite game Lobotomy Corporation. Let's just check how fast world record is so I know what I'm up against. Oh. When it comes to speedrunning, there are two main types of games. Up first you have the gamer games. Real gamer games are made with speedrunning in mind. The developers fine tune everything to make you feel like an absolute chad when you play it fast. Basically it makes you feel like this gentleman right here. Celeste is a good example of this, as well as games like Super Mario 6-4 and the critically acclaimed Barney's Hide and Seek, specifically the no controller category. Secondly, there's strategy based speedruns. This is where going fast involves lots of planning and forethought, and generally requires less precision. This is where you find a lot of the shorter RPG speedruns, notably Pokemon, some Final Fantasy games, and the sweet life of Zack and Cody tipped in trouble for the Nintendo DS. But there's a third type of speedrun the one where you try to be fast but the game is just slow. Lobotomy Corporation is definitely one of these games. I looked at the leaderboards on speedrun.com the quickest category you can run on current patch is nearly 5 hours. That's world record. If you've played the game, then you know why it's like this, but since Lobotomy Corporation is a little bit of a lesser known game, I'll give you some context. If you know what SCP is, you'll understand the basic concept of Lobotomy Corporation. If you don't, then just go watch Markiplier's old content or something. I, I, don't, I don't know. Anyway, Lobotomy Corporation is an SCP-inspired management simulator where you send cannon fodder into the room with a giant censored bar in it, then forget to send someone into the funky ticket room, then some of your employees get ran over by a ghost train. The further you progress, and the more abnormalities you have to deal with, the easier it is to figure out which gimmicks are deadly. Because believe me, every single one of them has a gimmick to remember. You have to think so much, and I think most speedrunners function off muscle memory, so... Needless to say, there still are people who run this game, the... Kind of. The latest run was submitted six months ago, and there's only five runners, so I don't think the game's very optimized. And you know what? I'm kind of curious. How fast can this game get? Well, I think I've come up with the answer. After years of research, I have come up with a foolproof formula to determine the absolute limit of any game ever. And it's not even arbitrary. At all. Anyway, uh, here it is. Uh, wait, that's not... Oh, there it is. So we have the absolute limit equal to the number of characters times the number of levels to the power of the fun coefficient times the speed factor times the fan service constant. So, the number of characters is fairly self-explanatory. If you need help, ask a counselor. It's just the number of necessary characters. It's... It's easy. The smallest amount of employees you'll need for a playthrough is one per workable abnormality, or three per department. Given ten departments, that makes thirty. Number of levels... Um... Just add up your splits. I... I don't know. Okay, so the fun coefficient is gonna need some explaining. Basically, it's a number between 0 and 1 that represents how much fun you have with the game. Now, this number is on a per game basis, so every game is going to have a different fun coefficient. Now, I like Lobotomy Corporation, but it's not my favorite game, so I'll give it a solid 0.8. Up next comes the speed factor. That's also per game, it's a number from 0 to 1 that represents how fast the game is. The slower, the higher. Lobotomy Corporation is a little slow, so... 1. Last up is... Oh no. It's the fan service constant. Why is there not more fan service? 
I want more fan service. Zero. I give it a zero. So let's just uh, do the calculations and add it up. And uh, oh, zero seconds. Nice.